Hello, this is Keith Dahl, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about a few different things regarding Microsoft Excel 365. Today we're going to do a simple formula using the index and match. We're going to learn how to do set up data validation lists from your data. And we're also going to be learning how we could do conditional formatting. So like for instance, over here, I can select any value and your conditional formatting will be updated based upon whatever value that you select over here and uh, it finds uh, and it returns the value that we're looking for. So first of all, this data set, I generated it using chat GPT. Uh, that's number one. Uh, so let's uh, talk about the index and match function. So the purpose of this here is I got this whole data range here. It's not set up as a table at this point, but what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to select an ID. In this case, it's the employee's ID. And I wanna highlight their data uh, based upon finding their ID. So in this case, I selected the ID four. So it's gonna come over here and search in this column, column E, and it's gonna look for the ID four. Once it finds that, then it's gonna return the first name over in this cell right here. And then it's gonna conditionally format, or in this case, it's gonna highlight that entire row. So let's discuss the index and match function. For first of all, the second argument to the index function in this case is we're trying to, let's go over here to the right so we'll explain it a little bit further. So basically what it's doing, it's the first argument to the match function is I'm gonna try to find, I'm gonna pass it a value that I'm looking for. In this case, the value that I'm looking for is it resides in cell B6. So that's over here to the right, so that's why we have B6. So uh, the second argument to the match function is the range. Basically, where am I gonna find the value that I'm looking for in the first argument? So in this case, I'm looking for the ID. So I enter in the range where that value might reside. So in this case, it's gonna reside in the range of E6 all the way down to the end of my data set, which is down to E30. So that's why I have that range set. And then the third argument to the match function is whether or not we want to try to what type of match are we trying to find in this case i put zero because i want to find the exact match so i'm looking for the number four that means i want to exactly match number four somewhere within this range so for definition purposes match in this case finds the position of the value in cell b6 within this range that we set. So that's what that is. Now let's go back over to the index uh, portion of this formula. So the first argument to the index function, let's go over here. I set a range of F6 to F30. So remember what I said over here, I wanna find Based upon the ID that I select, I want to return the employee's name, just the employee's name. So let's go over here to the right. So where, uh, so <clears throat> again, this, the index function right here, it says this part of the formula returns the value from the range that we set in the first argument at the position found or returned by the max match function. So let's go over here to the right. So 
I want to return just the name, so this is why I selected only the range from F6 down to F30. I didn't select the entire data range here. I just selected this range because all I want to return in this case is the name of the person. So let's go up here in the formula bar and click into it. It puts you into F, uh, F, um, edit mode. If I select just the match portion of this formula, see it returns number four of, of, of here. Okay, so returns four. So based upon this, in this range here, the first argument, F6 through F30, it's going to count down four values in this range. So it starts from the top and it counts down one, two, three, four. And that's why it returns this individual's name. So let's press escape to get out of it. Let's uh, select another value and you'll see. And as it jumps down, so again, let's go over here. Let's bring this. The match function returns the number 11 because that's, uh, we've casted the value of 11 here and the range it found with that value within this range, 11 positions down. And so from this portion right here, again, it looks in the range of F6 through F30 and it counts down 11 values. And that's why it returns Robert Jackson as praise. So I press escape here. So that's how that portion works. Now let's see how this conditional formatting is set up. Well, actually, let's first go over here in Microsoft Excel 365. If I, uh, I'm using a shortcut key sequence, you could also get uh, to the data validation by going to the home tab. Uh, press uh, the data tab actually and the data validation is over here in the data tools group so if I use a shortcut key using the alt key sequence alt a v v it brings me to the data validation so what I did to set this up was I just selected list from this value here and I selected well where do I want to get the values from? So I selected the range E6 through E30. So uh, E6 all the way down to E30. And what Microsoft 365 does in this particular instance, if I had duplicate values in this list, it would only return unique values, which is a great feature of this. So that's how I set that up. Now let's go to the conditional formatting. And if I, uh, what you want to do when you conditionally format something, you want to select the range that uh, you want to conditionally format. In this particular instance, I want to highlight the entire row. So what I did was I selected my entire data range, control shift down, control shift right, selects my range, and then I would go up, up to home, conditional formatting and I already have this set up but what I would do initially is I would select new rule but well, let's manage rules here and uh, for the current selection this is the data validation I have already set up so as you can see the uh, this validation or this conditional formatting applies to the range that I selected so let's uh, select that, press edit rule. What you want to do is you want to, since I'm using a formula, we're going to select use a formula to determine which cells to format. So this is the uh, formula that I'm using. So basically what this is doing is for each cell within the range that I want to conditionally format, it's going to apply this uh, formula here. So what this is saying right here is is e6 so let's go to e6 we start in the uppermost left cell in your range that you want to conditionally format and we're going to 
press E, and we're going to select E6. And what this means that is for each uh, cell here, it's going to ask, does E, in this particular case, does E6 equal to the value that we have in here? Uh, I saw it, it uh, the value here is absolute, so the, which means that no matter what cell this uh, formula applies to, it's always going to refer to cell B6. E6, in this case, is a combination of absolute and relative. So in other words, it's only going to check the value in column E always, but it's going to go down to each row. Uh, so in that case, so once it applies its value, what's it's going to apply the format. And the only thing that I did was I selected the fill tab here, and I selected whatever color that I wanted to apply this to. And also, to I selected a bold font. So that's why this is bold, and the background color, the fill color, is what it is. So let's go back here, back here. Let's go back there. So that's how the conditional formatting was set up. So again, going back to the conditional formatting, what Excel does, it checks that formula uh, for each cell in the range. So for here, in this particular case, so let's go through this uh, little step-by-step and show you what's happening in the background. Let's get the formula first. And I'm going to copy and paste it to a cell here. I go here and copy it without the equal sign. So basically, first step, What's it doing? It's it's looking at this particular cell. Does E6 equal to cell B6? In this case, it doesn't. 1 does not equal 11. Excel then goes to this cell here and applies the same formula. Does E6 equal B6? No. So it continues on doing that. Once it does equal in this and then it goes down to the next row and on further once it gets to a match where then in this particular case the formula turns to cell uh, e16 <clears throat> then it says e16 equal to b6 it does so then it applies a formatting to this cell comes over here looks at that uh, formula does E16 uh, e equal that? Yes, it does. So that's why th this cell is then formatted. So it continues on through that process. Hopefully this tutorial gave you a great example for your data and analysis projects. It helped you on better understand the index and match formula, finding one um, um, uh, condition, basically. And how to set up data validation lists and also conditional formatting. I want to thank you for stopping by today. You have a great day. And then uh, please remember to like and, uh, like and comment on this video. And also please subscribe if you haven't done so already. Because by subscribing, it allows you to be alerted every time I upload a new video. Thanks again. Have a great day.